Hi, welcome. Uh, this week, we've got a really quick case study on neural networks. So this is, will be a short video on how to perform neural networks using the Rapid Miner Studio Suite. So it's going to be a little bit shorter this week because we want to tell you how to set up Rapid Miner, how to pull data in. We're just going to go straight to it. What a neural network is as we go along and then, then how to set it up by the book. And then you'll pull the word video and make small changes. So right now we'll go ahead and uh, go pull up um, our, our e-text and go straight to the case. So here we go. And let's turn on textbook and we click to open our ebook or if you have the physical book you can just go straight to page 197 as you see uh, if you're in the ebook it will be section 73 of 333 so uh, as you can see we're looking we're trying to predict satisfaction using a binomial metric either satisfied or not now um so we've got a binary measure, which um, normally we would have a scale variable, but for learning purposes, it's fine. Uh, you can see, you know, we got different variables that we'd love to throw in there, how much they spent, um, eating and drinking within the airport, how much they spent shopping at the little store within the airport, uh, whether it's business or personal travel, um, male or female, customer's age, what status they are um, as far as their you know, frequent fire miles, uh, what month it is, day again, you know, we talked about that last time. Um, which airline, and we had two to choose from, so which state, all of these. So there's a lot of stuff we would love to, but oh, if you look, if you, if you opened our, our scoring data, we don't have all of these to use to predict. So we don't want to throw a bunch of stuff in the model if we're not going to have it to use to predict because it can just cause no, extra noise. So uh, you pull up your data set. There was, um, I forget how many lines of data. It was a lot. There's 10,000. You know, um, customer touch points here, inter, uh, transactions here. This again is how to set up the data. You should, hopefully, you've already got these data sets downloaded and pulled into a repository uh, to make it easier so we can just get started. So we'll go ahead, pull our data in, check it out, and then start to load it. So uh, and the original attributes that we're going to use are at the bottom of page uh, it's still showing what an operator is select attributes parameters the bottom of page 208 is going to tell us what we're going to use for our example now remember I always change something in the actual file and I want you to make sure you know how to do it so um, not much just I don't want to make it too hard just make sure you know what you're doing so we'll go, we'll go ahead and get started let's cut uh, cut the textbook off while we don't need it and pull up rapid miner and here we go so first thing you know we're going to do is go Find wherever you loaded your data sets. I got mine in a chapter six. I got satisfaction and, and then the new data. That's our scoring data. Uh, so we go ahead and pull this in. Remember, if, you, if you're not using an operator, you don't have to pull this the first time. You don't have to connect it. It automatically knows it's connected. If you're using data access operator or read CSV or read Excel, you'll have to actually connect the inputs. So um, if you want, we can go ahead and look and see what we have. And there we go. Now, since I've already pulled this into a different model, it didn't do all the too many. First time you do it, it'll probably tell you you got too many, but 
Uh, Y'all should know how to do that by now. And all of this looks good. So if we want to go to our summary statistics again, here you can look. This is something telling us we may have some problematic data if you throw it into certain types of, I mean, um, certain types of um, models. So it's something to look at. Some say I would love in our final model to use gender, but we don't have it for the scoring data. So I mean, there's no need in putting it in the model if we're not going to have it to use because it may, it may reduce some bias that we need. Origin state, we don't have that. So uh, we've got those. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this out and go back to my design. So what's the next thing we need? Go ahead and select our attributes. So right here, pull that up. And if you don't have it, you know, you can go into Uh, one of these, um, probably blending or, and, and, or you can just type in attributes if it's not coming up, but it should come up most likely. So we've got select attributes. Remember, we're only going to use a subset. We're not going to use every one of those. So we want to pick subset and then pick which ones we're throwing in there. So what are we told to use? At the very bottom of page 2 eight. Age, arrival delay, day of flight date. Age, arrival delay, day of flight date, departure delay, flight time, Number of flights, so how many flights have they had previously with us? Satisfaction and type of travel, is it business, you know, whatever. So satisfaction, you can see it's listed as nominal. nominal. Um, type of travel, that's also nominal. Everything else here, so and we could run it and pull it up and make sure it cut us down, but we're pretty sure that it did. So that's what we have in there. So now our next step, go ahead and set our role. So on this one, satisfaction is going to be our label. Everything else is regular. So satisfaction is our label. Until we get to that nominal, then we'll have to change it and, and make it a dummy variable, just like we did last time. So that's not going to be down here because it doesn't automatically assume we have dummy variables. So go to blending. Um, attributes, types, and then pull nominal to numerical. We're going to take words and turn them into numbers again. So since we've only got one left, we can leave all, all or you can pull a subset and just tell it, but I think it should work here. So we're going to use dummy, dummy coding again, which means for each of those types of travels, it's going to be a zero if it's not that type and a one if it is. So we're going to turn that into three different variables, but only two are going to show up. Remember, we have to have a set baseline for comparison. So we're told to use for that baseline type of travel. Business travel. Should spell correctly and everything's right. And then 
We've only got one this week, so click apply. Again, I was going to throw Ginger in there and make you have that one as a second one because I really just wanted to see what they came up with. But since we don't have it in the score and we can't, so um, unexpected. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now this one we have something that we haven't had. If you want to pick just certain numbers, I mean, you could filter or, or everything it ends with a one or whatever. But this one, we've got something we didn't have last week. Missing values. Or well, we did, but we replaced it with the mean. Or, no, we didn't. We didn't have any missing values last week. But this one has missing values, so we'll have to come up with a way to do that because you cannot run a neural net with missing values. It doesn't know how to treat it. At least not in this program. So we'll go to cleansing. Instead of blending and pulling everything together, we're going to cleanse. We're going to clean our data. Missing. So we will pull replace missing values. You can pull remove and it'll delete, you know, whatever. But right now we're going to replace missing values. And what are we going to use? We're going to leave the attribute. So anything that's got a missing value, we'll have all and leave it at default average. So it's going to replace missing values with the mean. Then we're told we're not going to have enough room, and we're not. So just go ahead and drag to make it all nice and neat for the outcome. So what are we going to do next? Now we're going to look and see how how good our model is and what what it can predict, right? So now we're going to pull cross validation up here just like we did last week. And if you see that's purple with an example, it's red because it's missing something it needs. So we go look at the purple examples and our example set, pull it right in there. Then we double click to tell it what we want to do. Well, we're looking for a neural net. So if you go under modeling down here in operator, now you can type in neural net if you want to and pull it right to it. Uh, under modeling, it's going to be predictive neural nets. And there's different deep learning, auto machine learning, We're just going to pull a simple neural net. So we got a training data. That's what we got loaded. And then our model. Okay. Now, just like last week, we're going to apply the model and then, and then check out the performance. So we got two reds here. We need two. So our model comes over. We're using the model. It's neural net. That's our model based on all the inputs we put in there. If you just hover over that, it kind of tells what we got, what's still missing and, and, and everything. Um, test model for unlabel. Or not, un yeah. All right, next we've got to pull our performance. If you look down here, there's two performances. You want the one that says classification. Um, so if you look over here, I type perform in just to see, and there's a whole bunch. There's, you see the regression that we used last week. Um, at the top, there's classification. There's binomial, which might would work, but let's go ahead and use classification because that's what we're doing. We're predicting which class they're going to be in, either satisfied, not satisfied, based on some other classes we got. So... You see we got a red thing there and a red thing here. So let's go ahead and pull this over. Now we've got to tell it click on a performance here and tell it what we want. So click on performance. Now we got accuracy. That's the one 
that it asked for in the textbook. I told you to go ahead and click on classification. So we can just go ahead and do it here now so you'll know how. But these are the two I asked for. This is what the textbook. So now we got that. So we got a got a red error message. It needs a performance to test. So we got PER performance to performance. And now we can go right back up. Should be ready to go. So now what are we going to do? We want to look and see what our model did and then look and see how well our model did and we should be right ready to run we can just go ahead and click our blue play button and watch it go and there we go and it pops up our results our performance results this is what we call a confusion matrix. You got those that uh, we predicted to be satisfied that actually were. Those that we, you know, we predicted not satisfied that actually were. And you know, we see how you know what we got right. Then six to eight, forty-eight. So one and yeah, um, one eight, and then that's twelve. Yeah, that's about right. We got the ones we predicted to be not satisfied. It actually were. So that could be good and bad. If we're using this to send an incentive ahead of time to try to alleviate whether or not, you know, we would have wasted money. You know, we sent them something for nothing. They're going to be satisfied anyway. Or you could always look and you know, we didn't have as many mad at us as we thought we were going to. So... And these we predicted and actually were, so 65% correct there. And then the same thing across. We predicted satisfied and true, and okay, so. Also, if you look at what this classification area, if you look, accuracy. 77.28, the error, 22.7. They're inverse. That's really what I was wanting you to get out of that. Uh, some people wrote me a book already, but you know, I just wanted you to see that, you know, So here's a simplified confusion matrix, but it doesn't tell, you know, the percentage of each side. I mean, you can give me this, but what I asked for is just go ahead and screenshot this one and screenshot this one. So this is our neural, neural net. This is our actual results. This is what we need. So what we got, instead of running all these inputs straight to one numerical output like we did last time and getting a beta weight, we're assuming that each one of these is going to matter differently to different groups of people. And we're trying to create little clusters to reduce, you know, if you'll remember everything that doesn't fall exactly on your regression line and nothing ever does, there's a residual, the distance. So we're trying to reduce that residual because we probably, you know, we're using, you know, the same type of formula, but we're assuming that if we make this better, if we can figure out different groups that have different views on this outcome based on our inputs, then we can set weights here in these hidden layers rather than just having straight lines. And we're going to get more accurate lines from here to here. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to find clusters within this that don't, you know, that explain some of what we didn't explain, you know, in, in the regression. Plus, it's a classification model, so I mean, you don't have a. That's a, you know another difference. <laughs> so we're trying to take all these inputs, different types. And find these, well, we got seven nodes here. I thought we had six, but, oh, that's our threshold. And then we got six. And here's our different weights. 
So we're saying these different, there's, there's beta weights are different depending on which group. If we correctly found different groups where these are all, you know, significantly different from the others. So that doesn't tell us, I mean, it does, but if we want something that's a little easier to read, we click on description. And this is what I wanted y'all just copy and paste this right into the block that I gave you on your spreadsheet. So the trick is to be able to go through and try to uh, say stereotype, but yeah, kind of profile each one of these groups. So now just a minute, I'm going to uh, just kind of tell you what I mean by, you know, paint a profile of these. And we're going to pull up a website that's probably going to be our discussion group, discussion uh Post for next week. There's a site here called Prism um, that uses a lot of. Go ahead and, and, and pull it up and show you. Here we go. So this, this is actually a professional site, but they, they got a free site that you can go and get, you know, some stuff that's actually pretty interesting. So you can type in your zip code. Let's see, I don't remember what this is, whatever it is, somewhere. So this is Greenville, Texas. So we can look up there and it's going to pull in the demographics of people living in Greenville, Texas and use that to predict a customer profile group. And then you can pick on one of these profile groups and see. So you got the new melting pot, we'll see what that is. So you're saying in Greenville, you got, you know, enough people with these demographics here to form a significant group. And based on these, we're predicting one out of like 20 different lifestyles they got over there and what they are. So, you know, they're saying most of them, you know, the median household income is 28,000, so not much. And... You know, second city just outside, you know, any city limits and and lower mid-scale income, low producing assets, uh, basic technology, nothing fancy, age, less than 55, so before the twilight years, they're still a working class. Um, some have kids, some don't. Most of them rent because they can't afford to buy high school level. Uh, working service fields. So, based on that, they pull all of these and form a group, and they say this group in this part of town, and you know they own a Mr. Bishi, eat at Logan Roadhouse, shop at Foot Locker, go to uh, wrestling events, stay at La Quinta, uh, use podcast, and listen to Radio.com. And we can go back up and see. Hopefully, or we can go back and let's see what some of these others, low-tech singles, see what that is. So these are going to be a different, probably lower-income group, but the, the, the demographics and traits are a little bit different. Yeah, we've got basically the same median income, but, you know, who they are and what they have they're going to be, these are mostly retired without kids above 65. So there's the difference in the, in the cluster. Um, below average technology because, you know, they probably use Facebook to read what the grandkids are doing, and that's about it. What's, what's the prime picture of these people? They own a Buick. They eat at Long John Silver, uh, shop at Big, Lot, Big Lots, follow figure skating, listen to gospel music. So you can see how all this would be very important to uh, marketers, you know, as you grab all this big data in, and if you're going in certain areas, you can see, you know, what what you do, you know, what's good for us and what's not for business and for the customer, hopefully. So, yeah, I'm going to send you all that link again probably next week when we're doing clusters and, and let you all um, 
pull up either your hometown or, or, or a zip code that you're familiar with and give me a rundown on what's there and how close you think their descriptions are. Um, it's always, you know, a pretty fun project to do. So I'm go ahead and go back. You can see here. You can see how, like that's what I was talking about. He said you got to paint the picture of what these nodes are for. You know, they can really be useful to you. But if you can, or at least if the computer can, you can understand. You know, the likelihood of what your expected outcomes are, and and know how to move forward and deal with it. So. Um, that's here, we can go back to our design page. And let's look at some scoring. So next, we'll just go ahead and close these out and pull up our scoring model. New data, here we go. Now remember, we don't have to select attributes this time. A couple of y'all selected attributes. It's only gonna pull whatever you selected here. If it has it in its data set, if it doesn't, it's gonna give you an error term because it's gonna be trying to read something that isn't there. You can have a million attributes in this scoring data. It's only going to look for what you tell it in this model because we're going to pull the model down into it. We do have to make sure that we don't have any missing values. And... Let's see, make sure. Well, I think we just don't have any missing values in there. So we can pull that in and look at it. Or you can just click it right here and scroll down and make sure. So let's go ahead. If you hover over it, the output, now you can just scroll down. We don't have any missing values, so we don't need to do anything uh, there. If we did, we would. But now we have to do our nominal to numerical, if y'all remember, that's blending and types. Um, oh, I still have it on perform. So blending, attributes, types, and then we're gonna go nominal to numerical. We don't have a label, so we don't have to worry about that. So we'll click on this dummy variable and comparison group and click on that. And what did we have there? Type of travel and we use what business? Travel as our comparison. Apply. So now, I think we can just bring into an apply model and we're going to bring our example set is going to be unlabeled. Our model is going to come from the model we just tested. And now we can bring our label up. If you want to, you can pull the model up. Doesn't matter. Uh, we've already captured it in the last time. So just run it and we'll see out of these new data, really, which model we think so yeah, there's our model again, and that's in case you need it, but our example set, that's what we're looking for here, our scoring. And based on this, you can look and see what it's predicting. We got a 75, 76% chance satisfied here. Anything in the middle here is not that useful to us. I mean, it's basically a toss, toss of a coin. So uh, if you wanted to, you could kind of flip here and, and you flip one and then your highest um, confidence for not satisfied is going to be on the other side. So we're pretty sure number three is not happy. We're a lot more sure than not that number eight's not happy. We got two here that, uh, it's a toss of a coin. This model really doesn't help us there. But all the others we can pretty well predict 
So we can go ahead and, and take action on these two, and then if we want to take action here, let it ride. We'll take preemptive action, you know, give them some bonus points or something other, and you know, or, or an upgrade on the next flight or, or something to try to keep them from being mad at us. Here, this one's you know, maybe more not than it is, so you know, maybe just give them a little bit. I don't know. Kind of a flip of a coin. Maybe you'd let that ride because it's more satisfied than not, or maybe you know, give them a little bit. Here, are these people, you probably either already give them enough or they fly enough that they're getting you know, something. We don't really have to take a lot of action here. So that's how you read it, and that's how you interpret it. So... Uh, you'd capture this and paste it in, and then other than that, that's how you do it. So you can go back in and start, a, start over and use the attributes that I gave you in the, in the Word document. Uh, I'll probably cut out Two things that didn't didn't give a whole lot of, you know, it probably caused about as much noise as you know to help reduce. So um, that's how you do a uh, a neural net. So again, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, Make sure you read the particular attributes and performance features, you know, measures that I want, run it, give me what I asked for, not exactly what was in the, it's always going to be a little bit different. Um, paste it in. Again, those of you that still having trouble copying um, your files, that little save button at the top, um, that gives you uh, your RMP file. So, hope this helps. Put any questions you have in the um, Q&A discussion boards and I'll try to answer them within a day.